Well, hey, uh, one of the things that Mike and I want to do this morning, we're trying to do this on a quarterly basis. Let's see if we can get this thing going. Is give you an update. Are you on? His mic is on. Test, test. There yes. we go. Um, it's giving an update on what's going on with the outpost. And, and just to give you kind of a, a flavor for what God has been saying to us, we went away uh, at the end of November uh, for a couple of days just to kind of pray, to talk through, to brainstorm about what God wants for our church in 2024. And you're going to hear more about that in the new year. But we wanted to give you an update on the outpost. Now, the last time we were up here, uh, we said there were some things that we wanted to do in 2023. And Mike, we had said that part of what you were going to do in this first six months a year is to build some teams uh, to begin uh, training yourself in terms of some of the things that are going on, as well as uh, pursue community connections. So how has that been going the last six months? Yeah, so thanks. Um, it, it's been uh, crazy. It's been fun. Um, but we have been able to um, establish a prayer team. Praise the Lord for that. I, that was one of the bases and the foundations, I believe, what we're trying to go towards. So uh, we have done that. And I would also like to open it up to if anybody is a prayer warrior and enjoys praying for new things and be able to hear from God on this, I would ask that you would come and see me. Come and talk to me. We, do, we meet once a month, and we just go before the Lord, and we, uh, we just pray. We pray. We talk through things. We, what is God doing in, in the midst of that? So that's one of the big things that we're doing. And some of that has come out of where we're heading. Mm -hmm. So we're thankful for that. God is beginning to speak to us on that. Uh, we have, uh, we began to do some, oh, my executive team, we have some of that in place. We have not met yet. Um, and part of that is just we're waiting to get into the new year. Um, so those two uh, teams have been established mm -hmm. and are beginning. And so, if you, again, if you have more of that uh, vision, that um, big picture idea, be able to implement those sort of ideas and type of wiring, uh, I would encourage you to come talk to me about that as well. Absolutely. Okay. And then Mike's been doing a lot in, in the community because a big part of this job in the outpost is making connections in the community. And so that's happened through, you guys all remember, we had Stop the Bus, which is a great way to connect with the schools um, through your coaching with football and with wrestling. Uh, you're really connecting in the schools in terms of being able to be in there and getting to know people. Uh, he's engaged with Unified Seaford along with me so that other churches uh, are part of that. And just generally uh, is starting a life group and really building those connections. Now, what we wanted to go over, because that's all great, and, um, but why are we doing this? So we wanted to kind of reaffirm. And uh, the reason that we are going down the road of the outpost, and we're going to talk a little more about it, is simply this. Our mission, the thing that we want as a church, is simply that every person in Seaford and surrounding area, that every person knows someone whose life is being changed by Jesus. That's literally it. We want every single person that calls this area their home to know somebody whose life is being changed by Jesus. That is called gospel saturation. It's letting everybody have access to the gospel. And now here's the thing. We can't do that ourselves, and we can't do it necessarily the way we are currently structured, right? And so uh, what are some of the things that we're going to be doing? And we'll talk a little bit in a little more of this detail in a second. But what are some of the things we're actually looking to do? in 2024 uh, to follow up what's happened so far in order to make that happen. So that's me. Okay, good. Yeah, lay it on uh, so <laughs> You tell people. Well, you just did a great segue in that missional uh, <laughs> exploration there. So, you know, again, everything we're trying to do is going to flow out of our mission. Everything. Everything is going to be how do we saturate our community in allowing people to know somebody that knows somebody that is being uh, impacted or, uh, for the gospel and, and Jesus. And so um, some of those ways we're going to do is begin an ESL ministry. We, some of you guys already know that. Some of you guys have said, yeah, I'm interested in doing that. But to, it's just not an ESL ministry, as some may know ESL. It is actually an evangelistic tool mm -hmm. to use for ESL. For example, yesterday I, I go to uh, the wrestling match at 545 in the morning, in a wrestling match, and I'm with my students, and, and multiple of them speak uh, Creole and Spanish. And uh, so I'm talking about this ESL training, and they're like, hey, can I come and help with that? Mm. My parents want to do this. And so um, there is already beginning a paved work. They're like, I'll volunteer my time to help you with this. You know, and, and we're going to find that probably, again, for me, it's 
it's the intention of, yes, bringing ESL, bringing language barriers, breaking those down, being able to fit in the community. All those parts of making a healthy community is great. Now, for those of you that are a little weirded out or, or like, I would love to be a part of that, but I have no idea what to do, we're actually going to be bringing training in yes. through the Alliance, who does something called Great Commission ESL, and they'll come in, we'll be setting this up at the end of February, that anybody can come be a part of this. And it's very relational based. We'd love for people to do that. We'll talk more about what we're asking in a little bit. But that's the ESL. What about the mentoring stuff? Uh, so the stuff? mentoring, uh, tutoring. So I contacted the uh, principal over at Susan Harrison over at Seaford High School, and I will be getting that in January, uh, just an hour a day, um, right after school, to, with especially the athletes. So I um, there's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. So if you're interested in that, come and talk to me. I'll gladly team you up with that. Um, but we are partnering with the Key Club um, mm -hmm. students there that they're going to actually do a lot of the tutoring because they already know the subject. So if you're like, man, I would love to just come and be a part and connect and, again, relationally connect, um, communicate with me, and I would yeah. gladly uh, team you up with some of those. Yep. And then hopefully that will eventually lead us. We're, we're talking about doing an alpha course. With those of you who aren't familiar, it's a, a way of uh, kind of formally introducing people to who Jesus is and what he's like. But that comes out of relationships, so we're not starting with that. We're going to end there. And then we're going to continue to pursue, do we need a third space? What does that look like? Do we want to buy and rent something? But that is not the starting place because what that looks like will depend on what God is doing. And so that's something that we're going to evolve as time goes on. So there's something about all this because, oh, and one of the other things we talked about was transportation, yeah. right? Yeah. Just wanted to say why that matters. So yeah, again, m many of our uh, families um, in our community do not drive. And part of that is be they don't have driver's license. Some of it is financial barriers. And so we're trying to meet the needs, um, the readily needs that are right now in front of us that we call low-hanging fruit needs that we can actually do and be a part of. So right now, that's what we're doing in terms of uh, some of us just driving around kids, but we're trying to find a bigger space to be able to travel and, and utilize these kids and their parents right. to pick so. them up for things such as ESL. So we'll be tutoring, looking at the, the maybe resourcing that and actually that having something... Um, having a church uh, vehicle that allows us to do some of those ministry things. Yes. Now, here's, the, here's, the, here's what might be new to you. So far, this is all stuff we've talked about. Um, but if all we ever do is think about all these things as just a program of our church, we are limiting our reach and growth in the kingdom. Uh, most churches, uh, I, would, I would call it this way. Oh, come on. Give me a down arrow. There we go. Oh, not too much. Okay. See, I told you it looks better here, right? Yeah, I finally uploaded it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> this is the unnecessary work I do on PowerPoint sometimes to give you a picture. Uh, most churches are what you would call a lake church. Okay, I'm trying to do a picture here. A lake church is a church that um, ministers in their context to the people in their context. So if you think of a lake, right, there's always the, the diversity of, around that, what's in the lake, what's around the lake. And so a lake church nourishes all that, and, and they, they rely on, you know, inflow from the outside to grow, you know, kind of like a runoff and, and all that stuff. And that's what happens. And it's really, really powerful. It's really important. That's how most churches operate. But what we said was the outpost is more like what we would call a river church. Because the problem with the lake church they can run into is if there is no inflow and no outflow, what happens? It becomes stagnant. It becomes diseased. The, 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 even the, the fish in it, it doesn't, you know, it shrinks. It, it, it doesn't actually operate the way it's supposed to. And it only ever impacts the people that are right there. And we're looking at this and saying, well, there is an entire realm of people in our community that need to be touched with the gospel. And that's going to have to come through the outpost, which is the overflow of who we are. But in order for that to be sustainable, and Mike and I, when we, were, we went away and we were, we were talking about this, and it's what's been going through my mind, it's what's been going through his mind in training, was that we believe that the outpost is not just going to be simply an expression of our church in terms of a ministry, but we believe this God is taking this towards a church planting movement, where this turns into its own expression of church, which leads to other expressions of church, which is leading into reaching people that will never, ever come here. Why this is so important is it means we need to be healthy, we need to be growing, we need to be giving, we need to be doing all the things because you need a healthy lake to feed a healthy river. 
But it means we're going to need people who are willing to get out of the lake and go on the river. And so what I've asked Mike to do as we close is, so what does that mean? And by the way, if you have any questions on this, um, from what that looks like to how you can make beautiful PowerPoint presentations like this, you can come talk to us. But I wanted you to share what we're asking. Because everybody gets to be a part of this process. So we had said there was four asks. Yeah. So the four asks, go ahead and put them up there. We, got, we have the pray, we have the give, we have the serve. And the next one will be on the next page. And next page, okay. So for me, it's, again, everything starts with prayer. Who here cannot pray? So you're all part of the team already. And let me just remind you, and I know I mentioned it before, let's not minimize that. I believe everything God has done so far is because of we have prayed. We as a church have prayed. Remember a year and a half ago, you've prayed. God answered. Four or five months ago, you prayed. God answered. You're praying five months. You're in the moment now. You're praying. God has answered. Right? So pray. We need to be purposely, expectantly. Uh, we joined a team, as I mentioned earlier. Give with intentionality and sacrificially, meaning that because this is important, we can't do this alone, right? We can't do this by ourselves. We can't just magically wave the wand and, and think that everything is just going to appear. we got to be able to sacrificially give and, and, um, and uh, intentionally think about, okay, what are the things that God is going to do for like ESL training, all those things, like long-term things that are just not in the immediate, which is great in the immediate, but we're talking about long-term uh, sustainability. And then the other one is serve. Anybody can do these things. And, and I truly mean that. Um, I don't want to minimize it, but I also want to know there's, it's impactful, right? These families are desiring to be loved and cared for. It's impactful. Um, as an ESL trainer, um, that you're going to be able to spend time with people for two hours a, a, a day uh, in a week and be able to just care for them and, and share with them and see things come to life for them. Um, that they haven't experienced ever in their life. And by the way, if this is something Mike and I talked about this, this is one of those things, too, that you can see some of the commitments there if you're going to serve. Um, if you aren't doing anything right now or you're not doing much, jump right in. If you're already doing something else, but you think, oh, this sounds like what God is doing, but I can't do both, come talk to us. We're not asking you to add more if you're already busy. We're saying go where God is leading and if God is leading you into some of this and the things you're doing now, you have to step out of, then we'll work on and pray into God providing people for that. So don't let that stop you. But there's one more, and it's the big ask, if you will, in terms of commitment, and it's simply this one. Yeah, it, again, it goes back to being a part of the expression, the, the uh, missional expression that we're trying to accomplish here at the end of the day is being a part of the organization, the commitment, uh, living and breathing, I call it, like our family is, uh, of what this is going to look like long term, but also in the short term of saying, you know what, I'm, I'm all in. I want to be a part of this team and expression. If God leads us into uh, another expression of a church, that, that's where we're going to need you. If God's calling you an expression in the immediate now, in the, in the short term, we need you. Um, and those are sort of the things that we're talking about. So it's, it's important, but it's with intention. Yes. And so if you're asking, what does that even mean to join now? Does it mean I'm leaving here and going to a different service? No, no, it doesn't mean that. But it does mean that as we lean into this, as we begin to see the impact of some of these programs that you might serve at, uh, the goal is to begin to form that into um, basically small groups that are living in the Outpost Mission, life groups that are that way. And there will be opportunities where you say, look, I want to go and be in, and that's going to take my time and my energy because I'm going to commit to this. Be praying about that. If it's something you like, we'd love to be a part of that.